Hey guys, Joe again. Um, based on the comments I received on that last video, where I kind of explained what I was doing, I decided I would uh, go ahead and do it again. Now that uh, we're ready for harvest, or at least most majority of our fields are, um, and I figured I would um, discuss course play because I am on singer, single player today and how to set it up. I, I use course play all the time on tillage tools and whatnot because usually what I do is I um, I, um, I like I have class for maybe like two hours or three hours or four hours and then I have a, a break I can come back and uh, come back to my apartment here and then um, I like readjust the game a little bit and so I use course play all the time especially when um, I'm on single player I use the developer version which is on uh, github um, and it has uh, some speci has some special um, I don't want to say special but different uh, features compared to the one that is uh, available to download on I guess you could say on all the major well-known um, sites so like this one you can like preview your map you can do it in the other version but it doesn't have like a nice display um, this one uh, this one has a higher speed speed limit you can put um, on your grain truck when you're pulling it away from the field like I think the uh, the, the non-developer version has a cap of uh, I think it's 31 miles an hour so here we are we're running our Kinsey Kinsey 1500 um, I've ran this a few times on uh, let's see if we can put our parking brakes on here I ran this a few times on West Bridge um, I've never used it yet on this map I've never used it uh, with course play so um, has a fair amount of detail in it um, I borrowed the tracks from the Kinsey 1050 that's the only thing that was borrowed from it uh, rebuilt the track units uh, this is a pretty uh, unique um, uh, trailer um, it needs uh, some uh, new texturing I mean it's I haven't really touched it since last time I built it I need to redo the the texture on the cover um, I need to update the lights I just use some uh, arbitrary lights I had on other models um, and I could use a new I, I need to redo this decal because this is kinda really uh, a really piss poor job to be honest um, has uh, some pipe folding animation it's uh, the timings a little bit off but I didn't feel like uh, could use uh, some work on the PTO shaft as well um, but it's really cool it's a corner auger 1500 bushel it has a tilt um, and uh, it unfolds and tilts with the hydraulic there this uh, indicator I just made it as a fill level indicator I realize it's not what it's actually for but um, instead of it just being static and you know not doing anything I have it as like um, a way to like visually see if you're full pretty close to full or not if you're using like a HUD hider or something like that so it's a very massive model what I did is I put in a profile picture in blender so I got the length and width um, correct for proportion um, so this is all one-to-one -one scaling right here height and length and then what I did is I imported the 1050 and I made it uh, percentage wise wider um, and uh, so it should be scaled uh, pretty pretty dang close one to one for the 1500 bushel grain card. Um, underneath it, it just has I uh, put in some. I don't actually think these uh, U-bolts are actually on the main model, but I really like the looks how they look, and so I kept them. Uh, whether or not it's accurate or not, I don't really care. Um, hitch some uh, hydraulic uh, 
uh, some electrical hoses, hydraulic hoses, whatever you want. Uh, those uh, run all the way up here and into like another little hydraulic motor to run the cylinder on there and so and so. So um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, you know what, let's try, uh, let's try, f um, let's just start with uh, field 17 because it's pretty large. Actually, we'll do the uh, south end of 44 here. So I really like how the AO texture came out. I really like the blue. It looks really rich. Um, honestly, the, the models look better without the spec map. If I were to like use any kind of vehicle shader, dirt shader, and just use it as a uh, you know just the DDS texture AO file. Um, it looks very, very good. So too bad this model wasn't, you know, I didn't have the ability to model as I do now for 13 because it would have looked um, really, really excellent. So we have corn. So we're just going to start uh, plugging away at these soybeans over here. Um, We really don't need our 8370R. My plan is kind of sliding for some reason. I have to figure that out. Um, we have our John Deere. It's kind of nice because my corn header is kind of tucked back here. So this uh, also, uh, Julian's Combine just uh, did a, a new, um, it was actually easier just to retexture the model and put a new AO and just make new UV maps than it was to separate. Uh, maybe if Julian ever like has the time and if he still has the model uh, to actually like separate the UVs, the, the overlapping UV meshes. So we have a full tank, uh, this, this corn header, or this uh, draper header, uh, 640, um, isn't washable yet. Um, I was actually thinking of converting the Macdon drapers over, just because I wanted something a little bit different, um, and maybe stretching it out, doing a little bit of model work on that, and making it uh, 45 foot with kind of a flex in the middle. Uh, I think that'd be really cool. Um, as well as the 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 um, header trailers that um, were kind of built for it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a headland because I plan on um, setting up shop right here on this end. I like how the chop straw isn't contained to the field anymore with soil management because you can. Uh, it doesn't recognize anything like it, it's not limited to the field anymore it's the whole map all the ground terrain is fair game for soil mod now I mean you can fertilize grass you can do everything with grass I've never tried it but in theory you can get a better yield in your grass uh, with soil mod I don't know um, if that's true or not but I'm just going to go ahead and do an automatic working link. It's already set up because we used this one last. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make a nice headland up here so we can park our Peterbilt and Wilson trailer. Um, so the soybeans here should uh, be around 70 to from probably 65 to 75 bushel bushel an acre see I mean I mean blender does a really good job with your AO textures if you set it up properly uh, people ask me all the time what I use for my settings for an AO um, for an AO burn and honestly what I do is I delete all the lightings 
all the lamps, all the light sources, and I just uh, turn on ambient occlusion and I leave it at one. I don't turn on any environmental lighting, and I go to uh, constant jitter, I think it is, like all the way up, it's like 128, I think that's as high as I can go. And then I do like a, the other, the setting below it at like 0 .05, or 0 .5, 0 .05 or whatever it is, as high as that goes. And then I like make it uh, 2048 um, size um, uh, uh, PP, PNGs uh, to get the best high quality detail. Because I mean honestly, the amount of memory it uses, it's well worth... Um, Well, you know, you get a 2 versus 4 megabyte file, but your model is so much more cleaner. And then I also get questions all the time, like, what kind of computer do you need to mod? I mean, you can mod on an iPad. I mean, you can mod on an iPod. I don't really care. It really requires no... Um, you don't need a graphics card, okay? You don't need a dedicated GPO to do modeling or working in GE. You don't need a GPU or any kind of crazy hard drive to um, do any kind of rendering. Um, the only thing you really need is kind of um, a CPU in RAM. You want RAM, I run 16 gigs on mine, 4 to 8, totally fine. Um, Raphael runs, I think he runs 4 gigahertz on his CPU and I run 4.2 on mine. And it takes me anywhere from two to five minutes to render um, a full AO burn. Um, so, and another thing when you're, um, uh, a trick that uh, Serious Mods taught me, because um, I was totally unaware, is there's these, there's layers in Blender. I, I was totally oblivious to this. I had no idea because he sent me, he sent me a mod and it was, when I opened up the Blender file, it was just a steering wheel. Um, I'm like, okay, uh, where's the rest of the mod? And he's like, it's layers. I'm like, oh, where are the layers? So anyways, there's uh, you can assign the shape to a layer, which is great, because if you have, like, um, a tank's going on the frame, you know, because, like, when they make the frame, they, the frame, there's no tank on the frame for my planter example. I made the mistake of not using layers when I did the AO on my DB120, so... Now that I'm finishing up the model, the model itself is only about 80%. So now that I'm finishing up the model, I'm going to be redoing the AO and using layers. So it'll come out a lot nicer, a lot crisper, a lot cleaner. Um, but I was, I was, I'd use layers for this combine, and it works really well because you can put the the bin, the bin extension on in one layer. So it essentially, when you're the AO ignores the shadows from all the other objects. It, that you're working on, it's like it's uh, it's its own object in the entire uh, um, space. So it doesn't it doesn't use uh, any files or it doesn't recognize any other geometry to reflect light. So it's only focusing on that one object. And since I don't have a lighting source, um, it's just the whole thing is like a sun or a, a lamp itself, and. Uh, it, it, so far, it seems to be working really well. I watched a few uh, YouTube videos, and um, it's kind of disappointing on YouTube because there's nothing really related to um, farm sim or burning AO colors. Well, this is the struggles I was running into when I was learning, teaching myself. Is there there was no handouts, there was no freebies, there was no anyone telling me advice, telling me what to do. I had to do trial and error and teach myself, uh, make the mistakes and learn from those mistakes, uh, make a log, I had a pencil and pen, you do a couple error, you know, you do a couple trials, you do a couple trial burns, what works, you change this setting, then you do burn it again, does it look better, does it look worse, change this setting, you know, only one setting at a time, otherwise you won't know what, what, what change was relevant, so that's just common sense that's using your scientific method they teach you in elementary school all the way through grade school anyways there a lot of the YouTube channels or videos they they like burn it and then they go and texture it in Photoshop 
So I was like, well, I'm not going to learn Photoshop. I want to be able to burn my colors in my UV map using Blender because that's what it's supposed to do. So that was kind of frustrating to figure that out. And then another thing was how to assign normal map textures and like, you know, you, you had the one material, but you assign a new texture to it. So um, it's just a, a lot to learn. I realize it. Uh, but the only way you learn is if you start getting your hands dirty. The easiest thing to do is try to, you know, spend a weekend or whatever watching YouTube videos and, you know, start small. I'd say learn how to model first, then focus on um, learning how to do textures. And um, I usually save my models as, I save it as like the model one, which is the crude uh, model that has um, no uh, AO, no UV maps, no AO. Um, that way if I make an edit or I go back, uh, it has no modifiers applied because sometimes when you use like the smooth or edge loop or uh, edge whatever modifiers, it kind of deletes your ability to do quick select by seams. Um, so it makes it nearly impossible to separate components. So what I usually do is I separate all the components of the model, like left wing, right wing, outer wing, you know, wheels, cylinders. I separate them and I uh, do the parent parent components before I apply any modifiers, um, because uh, sometimes when you apply those modifiers, you can't. It's it's like so impossible to separate them again. So that's just. Uh, learn that by making that mistake and um, so we have a pretty decent uh, picture for you guys tonight we got a nice uh, lighting on our combine with our full moon we have the lights uh, on the 9560R combine um, what I did is I've been having a real issue with converting this 4 the issue is it's a 4x map with soil mod and I was getting these weird lines so what I ended up doing is I ended up deleting all the fruit the the fruit GRE file I made the whole thing black so I lost all my grass and crops but I still had my non fruit like this uh, weeds and tall grass and stuff like that so and then I converted everything to 8192 so my cultivators 8192 my soil mod both of them are 8192's uh, my fruit density is 8192 and um, so I don't know if that's actually going to solve the issue I guess I won't know again until I go ahead and uh, plant again um, so that was the only thing uh, alright so I will go ahead and uh, Oh, we just had a great demand with corn. It sold all of our corn. Um, got a pretty decent uh, price. Um, what did we do? We did, uh, uh, I guess, uh, anyways, we made probably like 250 to 300,000 off of 800,000 liters of corn. Um, we're almost to the point where we almost had to start planting a third crop because we're, 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 uh, we're growing so much soybean and uh, corn that it's it, it's hard to sell even even with like 16 days in between harvest or 20 days in between harvest because I have four day four day uh, growth periods. Um, it's still when you're unloading two million or three million liters of grain, it takes a while even. Even after 20 days, it's still the price is still pretty. Um, so you pretty much always have to have the pipe out uh, with the overloader because it doesn't like fold it back using this course play. So what I usually do is I imagine the tractor always coming from this angle on the field. Um, and I do start my course of play, and then I'll just have him get in a nice position, right about 
there and I can I can move my my auger here and then I'll just hit my pause button because that's where I want him to stop and then I will have him because I want my truck driver to come up there I'll just have him stop right there and I will have this as overloader automatic search to this combine I will want to start with that at 50 uh, I'll have him leave at uh, 80 actually I don't know we'll have to experiment um, I'll do maximum speed turn speed turn speed means when it's coming in where I first started to that whole path so I usually put bump that up to like nine I think nine's good uh, field speed bump it up to like 22 so it doesn't get too outrageous auto and auto so I will see how this um, see I don't know why it starts so low I'll bump it out to like 9.5 So, this Kinsey has dynamic fill planes, uh, working tracks, um, so I'm just going to, I like running the combine with this because I can stop my driver and then pick him up again, so I'll just stop, stop the overloader there I'll take out this little triangle I just wanted to empty my bin enough so that's pretty much all you have to do I I never save my overloader courses because I always make a new one pretty much every time because I never start in the same spot of a field more than once um, in 13 I used to save a lot of my courses but that was because I was never I, I was always playing on a like my MIG map my edit of MIG and um, it was pretty basic edit compared to this wind chaser edit I mean it was really nothing but like I never changed any of the fields or anything and it was always um, same courses with the trucks um, I always uh, had my trucks from go from the field to the to the grain facilities but since we're so close to where my grain complex is I never have to like um, save a course for my trucks either <clears throat> And uh, I do enjoy running the combine on manual. Um, we never put down any herbicide. As you can see, our values are a bit, a bit high. Um, we're at nine and six. We really should be at seven and four. Um, so what that means is, I think what we'll do is we'll put down lime after this harvest and just till and not broadcast any NPK. So, I don't know what the penalty is for being this elevated, but you can tell our moisture is pretty decent. Um, some of the fields are around 70% moisture. Um, but I'm not complaining about this yield, this little map. Uh, we'll probably end up with uh, probably seven, eight 800,000 liters of soybean and probably uh, a million million or so in corn um, so we'll probably be out to another good harvest now I notice in some combines the draper headers have these little on the ends of the draper headers they have these um, these little triangle things right here they kinda like uh, come out I don't know if that's by like via cylinder or that's manual but 
I was always wondering what was the purpose of that little extra is that is that to uh, mean is it like a wedge to get the separate the um, so I mean I don't know because sometimes I don't know if it's common to run your soybeans at an angle like a offset um, from when you planted but I don't know you guys tell me in the comments what's the what's the point of the little of this little end piece uh, being extruded out so I'm just gonna start my driver again he'll figure it out he'll do his little turn and have the stock rollers rolling I think what I'll do is I'll go around wait make one more headland and then uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll again so yep nine and a half that's just about right and you can do a vertical um, offset you can move your your truck or uh, your grain cart forward or backward um, but yeah that's a pretty sharp looking rig right there too bad they don't fold and unfold the pipe with course play they did in one version and then they it just stopped working I don't know, I had the same issue in 13. All of a sudden I downloaded one version of Course Play and it, it just stopped working, but they haven't I looked on GitHub and they probably they haven't touched that mod in probably five months. Um I don't know if they're done working on it, if it's finished, or if they're waiting for Giants to get the head out of their asses and get scripts out. I mean, it would be great if we can get that overloader script working in multiplayer, because right now it doesn't. Um, I would like the old wheel lane script from 13, where you can actually put in nodes in the in, via Giants Editor and script it into XML. Um, so you can actually make your wheel lanes on your row crops narrow and stuff like that. And so we're at 56% in our Kinsey. The, the issue we're having with the 1050 is it was too small capacity it, uh, in, in, in combination with my yield being two, twice as high as it should have been I think the Kinsey 1050 would work just fine um, but uh, now we really shouldn't have any issues with um, this at all now but I mean that still isn't the Kinsey 1050 still only had a, a capacity of like a little over half of the truck. I mean, it would one a full load, and the Kinsey would put the truck at sixty percent. I mean, I realize my truck is uh, maybe a little bit heavy because I have it. Uh, I have it spec'd for the the Wilson trailer of a heaping. It's at like fifty eight thousand capacity, um, and you can tell it's heat because when you put the tonneau the the cover back on, it's the corn spilling over the cover so I think it's an accurate number based on the dynamic fill planes so we are at 78% in that Kinsey that means it can hold um, another 12,000 liters before it's full Someone has asked asked me if it was a good idea to put wheels on that, and um, when you realize it's 1,500 bushel, I, I don't really think wheels are a good choice. I mean, that track has uh, two main rollers and uh, four idler wheels on it because it's a massive, massive track system on that combine. You know, it has an extra idler wheel compared to the 1050. Not to mention it could fit like about it's uh, you know another 500 bushel compared to the 1050. I think maybe get away with um, wheels on like a 1100 or a, yeah I'm not even sure about it. I think 1300 is probably like tracks too. 
I don't know. You could probably put large floater wheels on it, but why would you? I'm going to go ahead and request my driver again. What I would like to see is for the developers of course play to uh, maybe script in something where it, it recognizes um, harvestable crops. You know, if it was able to recognize a crop at growth stage, it would go around it or it would find a way to go around it versus crops that are no longer harvestable. I think that would be really cool because this right now it just drives all over the place and tramples. And if you have your wheel lane script, you know you're losing so much crop. That's why I took it off. But. So we're heaping this uh, 1500 pretty good. Ninety one percent. Not bad. Why did he stop on the incline like that? I have no idea. <sighs> Love this quiet cap. <laughs> that 95-60 hours struggling. There he goes again. I must be missing a, missing a line in my XML for particles to show up. So we're kind of at an interesting point um, in the farm. We are currently farming 460 acres. Uh, we have roughly 300, exactly 300 and uh, 356,000 which is not enough to buy our facilities over here. Our grain facility is like 360, 390,000 or something. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip for one, two, three, four. I'm going on the fifth. I'm gonna go down, uh, make some sections, and then uh, work my way back. That's my game plan. Maybe not. So there's that guy on our course. Just chilling. We have weeds. We're at uh, about 50. Hmm. It's kind of funny how our soil moisture fluctuates. Okay, now we're at 58, 60% moisture, 63, 
made a new uh, dirt texture, a new spec map for this combine because the other one I was not happy with it. So pretty happy with this new one on the body. Actually, it looks pretty realistic. So how many hours? We have uh, two seasons on this combine, I think. 41.9 hours. So this is our third season with this combine. <clears throat> Works great. Um, fuel usage is uh, pretty good. I think we can do about two, well it really depends, when you're running with a 12 row cone header at whatever, at eight, eight and a half miles an hour, we can cover some decent ground with that. Uh, soybeans, uh, we're a little bit slower. What really kills me is uh, the course play. Um, the Draper header is pretty heavy. Uh, the wages for course play. So we have the lights on over at the beat facilities down there. Uh, Conagra, the piler. We have four days to get all of our uh, fields harvested, which will be pretty easy. Uh, we picked up a uh, field 13 over there late. Um, a growth stage after we, you know, we already planned it by the time we had the funds to buy that. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we have enough. We have enough to buy 18 over here. So I think what we'll do is we'll pick up 18 and. Uh, We'll kind of split it, you know, right side of the farm and left side of the farm fields. Uh, we'll probably do 1 and 13 together on a kind of a, a delayed uh, growth stage. Now I get like comments about the flickering and I, I don't know what the issue is with the flickering because um, the in-game equipment does it as well. I mean you take a model that was from 13 and did not flicker and now it does.